This video is for section 7.2, day one. We're going to split this lesson into two days so that we can thoroughly understand the material. This lesson is about multiplying powers with the same base, and remember, the base is the bigger number in the bottom. So we are going to write pro a product of powers with the same base, such as 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 2nd using one exponent. So you can see right here we have a 4 in the exponent, we have a 2 in the exponent. Remember, the exponent just tells you how many times you're multiplying that number. Don't fall into the trap of multiplying the base and the exponent. That's not right. So in the first one, we have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's a total of four threes, as shown by the exponent. Same thing for the next set of parentheses. We have two threes. And if you count them all up, you get 3 to the 6th power because there are a total of 6 threes. So the basic idea here is that we're going to add the exponents. In general, a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. So basic idea is we're going to add the exponents. First one, 12 to the 4th times 12 to the 3rd. That means we're going to take 12 to the 4th plus 3. So we're adding the exponents and we get 12 to the 7th. We do not need to figure out what these equal because it's just asking for us to write each expression with only one base instead of 2. Now let's look at part B. Similarly, we still have a negative 5 in the base, um, but this time we're having negative 2 plus 7. We're taking the exponents and we're adding them. And be careful here because that 2 is negative. So now we have negative 2 plus 7. That is positive 5. So negative 5 to the 5th would be the um, simplified version of that. Um, one other example for you to look at, just in case you're wondering, um, can you have more than two numbers? And the answer is yes. So here's one example that you could write down. Uh, we have three bases instead of just 2, so we're going to simplify that by doing negative 3 plus 2 plus 6. Um, negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 plus 6 is, is 5, so we have 9 to the 5th. That's another example. And I'm sure you're wondering, when will we see variables? Well, the time is now. When variables Variable factors have more than one base. Be careful to combine only those powers with the same base. So basically that means combine like terms. So in part A, we have 4z to the 5th times 9z to the negative 12th. What I'm going to do is group all the like terms next to each other, because then it's harder to make a mistake. Okay. So we have the coefficients in one side of parentheses, and we have the regular variables with the powers and all that in the other set. So we can immediately do 4 times 9. That's 36. And now using the property we're talking about in this lesson, we're going to add the exponents. So we're adding a 5 and a negative 12. Or you could think about it as subtraction. So we still have the 36 in front, and now we have z to the negative 7th. And hopefully you can remember from 7.1 lesson that you can never have your final answer with a negative exponent. So that means we need to fix that negative exponent by taking the reciprocal. So we still have 36 up top, and now we have um, z to the 7th in the bottom. And that's as far as we can go. Um, one way that you know you're done simplifying is that you look for zero exponents or negative exponents or any like terms, and when those are all condensed and fixed, then you know that you're done. Let's look at part B now. We have 2a times 9b to the 4th times 3a to the 2nd. Again, I'm going to sort and combine like terms, so I'm going to put all the coefficients in one set of parentheses, and then the a's can go next to each other and then the B is all by itself. So remember, if you have different letters or variables, you cannot combine those exponents. They must be like each other. 2 times 9 times 3 is 54. And the, that A right there doesn't have an exponent, so we will assume it's a 1, because A to the first is just A. 
The rest is still the same. Now we need to combine the a's. So using today's property, we're going to add the exponents. And now we're going to get 54 a to the third and b to the fourth. And we know we are done simplifying because there are no negative exponents, there's no zero exponents, and all like terms are combined. Now we're going to talk about scientific notation. I know you've worked with this in the past. We're going to use the property for multiplying powers with the same base to multiply two numbers written in scientific notation. This is a very heavily used form in science class. So here's an example for you. Just to jog your memory on how scientific notation works. Um, 2.56 times 10 to the 5th. That 5 in the numerator, or sorry, in the exponent, tells us that we're moving the decimal over 5 times. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you replace all the empty spaces with zeros, and you can see that we get the number 256,000. So now let's multiply two values in scientific notation. And here's an application problem that you'll definitely see something like this in, in science class soon. The speed of light is about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, which is really fast. How far would a beam of light travel in 8.64 times 10 to the 4 seconds, aka one day? What we're going to do is multiply the speed and the time. So we're going to have 3 times 10 to the 8th meters in 1 second, and then we're going to have 8.46 8.64 times 10 to the fourth seconds over 1. We're using the units as you can see. I believe we have talked about the canceling of the units before. If not in math class, we have definitely done it in science. So the seconds go away because there's one on top and bottom. Now, similarly to the previous couple problems, we're going to combine like terms. So the numbers in front are going to go next to each other. And then on the other side, we're going to have the, the 10 to the 8th and the 10 to the 4th next to each other. 3 times 8.64 is 25.92. And today's lesson tells us that when we have the same base, we're going to add the exponents. So that means we get 25.92 times 10 to the 12th. I know it feels like we're at our answer, but if you can recall, in scientific notation, the decimal point must be one away from the beginning. So it must be right here. So that means we need to move it one to the left, which means we need to add one to the exponent. So our final answer is going to be five, sorry, 2.5 nine two times ten to the thirteenth and the reason why we're adding one to the exponent is because now the decimal is starting one over to the left so it has to travel one more spot so that's the reason why we have our answer two point five nine two times ten to the thirteenth meters that is how far a beam of light would travel in one day That concludes day one portion, so please try the lesson check. Make sure you've completed 7.1 lesson check, and we will go through some of these problems together tomorrow.